This might just be the slowest hunt in nature. What you're watching is a baby starfish chasing a snail. We don't tend to think of starfish as intimidating predators, but look closely here. There's something horrifying going on. And no, the starfish isn't just tickling the clam, it's eating it in one of the most slow and painful ways possible. If you were designing a predator to truly unsettle the human mind, you might begin by stripping away its eyes, its teeth, its brain, and still give it a mouth to eat. And what you'd be left with is a starfish. But how does a starfish actually consume? How does it even know where the food is? Can it eat something as big as a fish or a person? These are all valid questions, and it turns out that this fish is a lot more intelligently designed than just a bunch of flopping arms. Starfish belong to the class Asteroidea, and they're close relatives of sea urchins, sand dollars, and brittle stars. Despite none of these really looking anything like what we think of as normal animals, each of these still eat with their mouths. They're just a bit hidden. But unlike normal animals like whales, dogs, or even us, a starfish's mouth can't bite, chew, or even swallow in the way we'd expect. Instead, it does something far stranger. Starfish push their stomach out through their mouth, smothering their prey, and then begin digesting it on the outside before pulling the liquefied meal back in. And yes, this is a pretty disgusting eating method for an animal as fun-looking as this. But this doesn't really explain how starfish are able to get the food in their mouths in the first place. To understand how they're actually able to hunt, we first have to look at the things they're trying to eat. Starfish, for the most part, love eating shellfish. No, not this kind of shellfish, but more like oysters, clams, and mussels, and on rarer occasions, snails or even sea cucumbers. Starfish don't exactly have the speed to keep up with anything else. Now, even though clams and mussels aren't exactly fast either, they're far from defenseless. They weigh armor forged by evolution. Shells made of calcium carbonate, a material so strong it's been studied for advanced ceramics and engineering composites. These shells are living fortresses. The two halves are bound by powerful adductor muscles. The powerful pound can clamp shut with a force greater than a crocodile's bite. Once sealed, they lock tighter than a steel trap, with edges so flush there's no gap for teeth, claws, or probing appendages to slip through. A crab might try brute force, cracking the shell with crushing pincers. A fish might attempt to smash it against a rock, but a fully closed clam or mussel can shrug off all of these. But somehow, these brainless, heartless creatures eat them as 80% of their main diet. And it doesn't break the shell, it doesn't shatter it, it just simply opens it. To see how a starfish is grabbing, you'll have to crouch down a little and peek under a starfish's arms. You'll see rows upon rows of tiny pulsating tube feet, hundreds of them. Each one ends in a soft, rounded pad like a miniature plunger. They don't look threatening at all. In fact, they look like the kind of thing you might see in a toddler's toy. But the twist begins with their biology. These aren't powered by muscles. There are no biceps here, no flexing tendons, no heart pumping blood to fuel movement in a starfish. In fact, it runs on a water vascular system. It's a pressurized network of canals that pump seawater through their bodies like a living hydraulic machine. These tube feet act like dozens of tiny hydraulic crowbars, each capable of pulling with a force several times the starfish's own weight. If one foot lets go, another sticks fast. They can cling to a rock while waves pound over them, crawl slowly across the seabed without tiring, and, most importantly, they can apply a steady, unrelenting pull to whatever they decided to eat. Now, if this was a Hollywood action sequence, you'd expect the starfish to lunge, tear, or smash. But no, what's coming next is slower and much more sinister. Once a starfish spots and catches a clam, it settles over it, draping its five arms in a slow, symmetrical embrace. Tube feet attach with soft, wet pops, sealing the connection. Then the pulling begins. But there is absolutely no yanking, no wrenching, and no stretching. The starfish just exerts a steady, patient pull with those hydraulic arms. 
Eclam's adductor muscles are built for a quick, defensive snap. Slam the door, keep it shut. Against a sudden attack, they're nearly unbeatable. But that's the problem with a quick defense muscle. It's not designed for a war of attrition. So the starfish waits. Hours tick by, sometimes an entire day. The clam burns through precious stores of energy to keep those shells shut, each second draining its reserves. And the starfish, it doesn't even break a sweat. Well, because it doesn't even have sweat glands. After all, its way of prying open with hydraulics doesn't let it tire like our muscles do. To visualize the aggressiveness and steadiness of the pull, a professor gave a clam to a sunflower star. Look how much he struggled to get the clam back. This is how strong the pull is. In real life too, the clam's muscles falter under the constant pressure, but the shells don't swing wide open. They just part by a fraction, maybe a millimeter, but that's all the starfish needs. But here's where the eating process takes a turn. The starfish doesn't shove its head in because it doesn't have a head. It doesn't bite because it doesn't have teeth either. Instead, it plays its trump card. You see this yellowish, squishy substance coming out of the starfish moving towards the shell? That's its stomach. Yes, its stomach is literally coming out of its body to directly consume the clam. The starfish has two of them, but the first, the cardiac stomach, is the real showstopper. It's not fixed in place like yours or mine. It's detachable, extendable, and capable of being pushed right out through its mouth. So picture this, the starfish feels that minuscule crack in the shell. It pushes the cardiac stomach out, sliding it through the gap like a thief threading an arm through a window. Once inside, the stomach unfolds over the soft, unprotected flesh of the clam. Then comes the chemistry. Digestive enzymes flood out, breaking down the clam's tissues into a thick, nutrient-rich soup. The clam is, quite literally, being dissolved alive outside the predator's body. When the feast is complete, the starfish pulls the cardiac stomach back in, now sloshing with partially digested slurry. That's when the pyloric stomach, its second stomach, takes over, completing digestion and sending the nutrients into long digestive glands that extend into each arm. Every part of the starfish gets its share of the spoils. And if you're wondering, yes, the whole process happens in plain sight. The eating is not hidden away inside. If you ever see a starfish hunched over a shell, you're watching an external stomach doing its slow, silent work. It's not just that the starfish has a weird set of tools, it's how those tools exploit the weaknesses of the prey. Clams and mussels evolve shells to block sudden attacks. They evolve muscles that could clamp down like a vice for short bursts. But evolution created a predator they can pull for 20 hours without stopping, being almost the perfect counter. Where a crab fails because it needs to eat now, a starfish wins because it can wait forever. Where a fish fails because it can't get past the armor, a starfish bypasses it entirely, slipping in a stomach instead of a jaw. It's almost unfair, like winning a bank vault not with explosives, but by leaning on the door until the hinges give way. With no speed, no aggression, and no muscles, the starfish acts like a horror movie villain for the clam. You can close the door, but it will just stand there, hand on the knob, forever. But how does a starfish know to hunt clams and mussels without a brain? Who tells it to seek out those impenetrable shells in the first place? It stems back to the starfish feet. Every starfish arm ends in a tiny eye. Not the kind that sees crisp detail, but a simple, light-sensing spot that can detect shadows and contrast. These eyes help the starfish stay orientated, guiding it towards dark, reef-like environments where prey might be hiding. But this isn't actually the main way they hunt. The tips of these feet are wired with sensory cells that can feel touch, detect temperature, and even taste chemicals drifting in the water. That means a starfish doesn't need eyes to find dinner. A clam hidden under a layer of sand still leaks faint chemical traces. To a starfish, these are beacons, leading it straight to the prize. 
It's strange, but starfish are born knowing the full ability to hunt even as babies. Not in a clumsy, trial and error way, but with the same precision and technique as an adult. They'll chase and extend their tiny stomachs into the shells of barnacles or snails, dissolving them alive in miniature versions of the same stomach-first attack that adult starfish use. It's pure, pre-written program biology. There is no central command, no conscious decision-making, just a distributed network of nerve cells in each arm, coordinating through simple chemical and electrical signals. It is a living algorithm, honed over 450 million years, executing one of the most efficient siege and digest operations in the animal kingdom. They're literally hardwired from birth to attack clams. It's strange, almost unsettling, that a creature with no brain can still hunt with such terrifying precision. It's five limbs, thinking for themselves, but still moving as one. There's no plan or awareness, just perfected movement and reaction, tuned to a pattern older than dinosaurs. It might sound ridiculous that this squishy, brainless sea creature can teach us anything useful, but scientists and engineers are already reverse engineering starfish to build the future. Their water-powered movement system, that web of pressurized tubes instead of muscles, is inspiring a new wave of soft robotics. Machines that don't need gears or motors, Underwater robots that can squeeze into cracks, cling to surfaces, and move without joints. It's like nature figured out hydraulics millions of years before humans ever did. Those tube feet, with their perfect grip and flexibility, are being copied for robotic grippers that work in fragile environments, like deep sea exploration, or even inside the human body during surgery. In the fast world of sharks, dolphins, and squid, starfish seem almost laughable. But in the slow-motion ecosystems of tide pools and coral reef, speed doesn't matter. Patience does. And in that game, starfish dominate. They creep like silent invaders, undetectable until it's too late. If you're small and slow and able to be dissolved, you're not getting away. If you enjoyed this one, check out this one about how many starfish you can create if you chop one up.